Welcome to the Jesus Show. Not that one. This is a check. This is what I do before I start a show. I go check, 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 check. To see if I can hear myself correctly. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I hope you liked last week's episode, which was a Jesucito episode. Muy, muy, muy pequeño episode. I guess it wasn't that pequeño. It was 40 minutes or 41 minutes, I guess. But it was our first episode with video. Today we're trying something else a little different. We're doing, obviously, the video. You can see me. Hey, guys. But instead of recording myself during the interview, I'm using the Zoom video for the interviews. We're going to do that for the next two episodes just to see how it works. If the video quality isn't that good or if it doesn't, cut back and forth correctly like cut to my cut to me then cut to the guest how i want it then i'm going to do this i'll talk into the camera and then i'll have you know I'll have my guest here on my laptop and then i'll cut it together and then it'll be like movie magic and then you guys wouldn't have known so i guess i shouldn't have told you yeah whatever now you know so we're going to get into it well actually before we get into it I want to, again, just take, take care of some business on the front end. Please, guys, make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you're following me on Instagram and Twitter. I have the YouTube channel. Make sure you're following me there. And, yeah, just rate and subscribe. If you can, write a review. Let me know, hey, I like it, and, you know, give me some stars. Or if you don't like it, say, hey, it's shitty and fix this and that. And then I may listen to you. I'm probably not going to listen to you. But hey, maybe. Who knows? I might. So today's guest is my good friend, Josh Gessman. He has a podcast called Corner of the Galaxy. So go check that podcast out. I met him years ago, I believe 2013. Uh, I talk about it in the interview with him, uh, he just, we just talk about soccer, talk about some galaxy stuff, and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, everybody, we're back, and my guest for today is Mr. Josh Gessman. Hey, Jesse, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, hey, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing, uh, you know what? Surviving. Surviving. I'd, I'd like to say I'm doing great because I'm healthy, my family's healthy, everything so far is, is good, yeah. um, but, but there's still too much out there to say I'm great, I'm perfect, but I'm, I'm close enough. Uh, same. I feel the same. I'm, great, I'm, great way to put it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm in yes. the position that I'm in right now. So, so that's, yes. that's a good thing. I agree with you. So let's start off with how did we meet? Do you remember how we met? <sighs> I, you know, I don't. And, and I was thinking about that whenever we started, whenever we, you said we were going to do this. And I was like, yeah. I don't remember the first time we met. I don't know if it was just social media that led us to meeting because that's how I meet most galaxy people that yeah. I know of. Right. And so, um, and most people who have become my friends is, is basically through that social media and through that circle. So I would imagine it's that way, but you were, you're, you're relatively young in my podcasting career in terms of when we, we overall met. So yeah. So um, for everybody yeah. that doesn't know, you have the corner of the galaxy podcast. Yes. Yes. And how long have you been doing it? Uh, this is season number 13 for us. Oh. And we're at 820 shows, I think. 821, 822. Yeah. Okay. That's, so, that's, a rough, that's a rough estimate, by the way. We're never going to pretend that that's like an <laughs> actual, but, you know, from right, right around that. So, so when we're done with the interview off air, I'm going to ask you a couple tips and tricks. <laughs> You know, I, I was saying, you, you know, we were talking about what we wanted to talk about. And while I love talking about soccer and I yeah. do it, you know, twice a week and I have for, for quite a long time, um, I like talking about podcasting almost as much as I like talking about soccer. So oh, good. whatever, yeah, actually, I like talking. Let's let's not qual let's, quantify let, Let's be that. serious about like it. <laughs> so you're right. I believe I did it. I was thinking about it and I was talking with Ali and I said, I don't necessarily remember how. But I know it was how, how we met, but I know it was through social media. 
Yes, it had to have been. I mean, that was back when Twitter was, you know, the the savior of the world where um, I had friends all over the world that I'm sure I could have stayed at their houses. Yeah. Uh, one of one of my one of my Twitter friends, uh, Mr. J Sykes, um, actually, the first time I ever met him was me picking him up at the airport. So that way he could stay at my parents house for a, oh, for really? a galaxy weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, nice. And, and Zach Woosley, um, who, who really helped me along my podcasting journey. The first time I ever met him in person yeah. that same day earlier, whenever I picked him up from the airport, so that way he could stay at oh, my wow. mom's house, nice. my mom and dad's house. So, yes. So, so yes, it's not it's not uncommon for me, you know, back in the day when yeah, Twitter yeah. was a normal place. Well, fun um, fact, a couple of fun yeah. facts. I tweeted one time at, because, so I used to have a Twitter yes. and then I got rid of it because I didn't, I wasn't really Why? using it. Yes, I agree. And then now with the show, I'm like, Ali was like, well, well you should get a Twitter. I was like, fuck, I guess I'll get a Twitter. <laughs> but I, I was going to say, it's, it's a horrible thing. Everybody's, you know, one of the big things right now is like to leave Facebook and I would leave Facebook in <laughs> a heartbeat. I'm like, but I got the show and yeah. I have the page and I have to have yeah. Instagram and I have to have, you know, all these other things. The only thing I haven't done is TikTok because I'm not cool enough. So other than that, I have all the rest of them. You know, I tried TikTok. My friend, Rachel, she's a fellow mm -hmm. flight attendant. She told me, hey, try TikTok. Mm -hmm. I, di I didn't get it. I mean, I don't. I We're get old. it, but I, no. but I was like, I don't know how to like, no, and my, I'm my 38 wife, now. I'm like, mm. my wife gets it. She's young. She's like six years younger than me. She gets it. She doesn't do same, it, but she gets it. Same with Allie. She yeah. gets it. She's, she's telling me, she's like, baby, you got to look at this and that. And I just sit there and I'm like, uh-huh. Well, yeah. Oh, cool. well, let, let's remember both things, both things about our significant others. Uh, they're smarter than us. They're younger than us. They're cooler yes. than us. Um, I follow, point, yes. I, I follow <laughs> Ali on Instagram as we were talking about. Um, I do not follow. Why would I follow you? That, yeah, was, no, no, why, no, that you makes shouldn't. no sense. Yes. Um, and I'm sure my wife is way cooler on Instagram too. I don't follow her on Instagram. That would be, that's too much. We're, we see each other all the time. Yeah. Yeah, of course. But so it was, it was through social media. Oh, I was mm -hmm. going to say, I tweeted out, um, one time I tweeted out to tweeted to Chad Barrett mm -hmm. when he was on the team and he replied and we had like maybe a, a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. We're like back and forth. He got a new car and I was like, Oh, Hey, now nice sound system. I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool. And then I, I tweeted uh, Stuart Holden and um, oh, the other guy that's on the show. Older Alexa, guy, blonde Alexa, hair. Oh, uh, 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 Rob, Rob, Rob Stone, Stone. Rob Stone. Rob Stoner. Absolutely. And I'd always see him at the gym. Uh -huh. Hermosa when I would go I was like oh hey it's and I give him a little little wave yep uh but yeah the way I met you it was something either Instagram or Twitter some it had to be it, one it was of Twitter it was Twitter because Instagram wasn't like that was big it a thing, thing right okay. yeah, well, yeah 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 so so it was Twitter I'm, I'm sure you asked something about you asked a question to the actual LA Galaxy account and me being the overzealous uh, attacker that I am was sort of like, here, let me help you out. I can give you yeah. the answers for that because they're <laughs> not going to get back to you. The whole day. I've stopped doing that, by the way, because I've grown up and I'm an adult now. So, um, I, but, but, I, but sometimes I will help if you have out. a couple of glasses of wine or a beer too, maybe you'd be like, hey, you know what? Let me take this. I got this. Drunk, drunk tweeting used to be a thing. And I remember subscribing to that lifestyle back in the day. So oh, yes, I, that's, I did yes, it. I did a couple of times. No, obviously. So, so we met online mm -hmm. and then I told you I was going through my chemotherapy. I remember this. I, don't, I, so I feel like, did you DM me or did you send me an email? Like there was something, I want to say it was longer than just like a tweet or something like that. It, it could have been a direct message. Wow. I really, I mean, I want to say that I remember exactly, but I don't. Mm -hmm. Right. But I told you what I was going through and I told you, I started listening to your podcast and I would listen to it when I would, when I was, you know, receiving my treatment. Right. And I would put my, I put my beanie over my eyes because I didn't want to see the bag mm -hmm. and the IV. And so I'd sit right. there and I just put my, my headphones in and I just listened to you and it, it got me thinking of other things. I know I was, right. you know, doing that shit. And, but when I was listening to you, it took my mind off of everything. Right. So I believe I shared, I, I mean, I shared that with you. Right. And then when you send me the package, do you remember sending, uh, sending I me do, the package? So, so there's, it's a, it's a funny story. One is um, I feel, do you remember what year it was? Cause I'm, I'm trying to remember off oh, the top man. of my head. I want to, I, I, I think it was 2013. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, we started the podcast in 2009. Okay. Um, I started to be an actual soccer reporter person in like 2012, whenever I finally got press credentials. So 2013 is 
what relatively early in my oh, wow. you know sort of existence in that um, yeah. in that whole space. So um, I remember getting the message and being like, well, like do I have enough pool to get any of this stuff done? Like, yeah. I'm like, well, we, ha we have to do something for Jesse. Like, and it wasn't, you know, I'll be honest. One of it is certainly was, was part of it was seeing your message and wanting to help you. But, but the other part of that, that was, well, how much pool do I have at the time? We were the only galaxy podcast. There wasn't one out yeah. there. We'd been rolling for a time. We had a pretty loyal following. Oh, you guys were gonna... the only ones. Oh, we, we, so, so the, just the, let's make sure we stay on this topic, but to go back, um, okay. the original LA galaxy podcaster, somebody who covered the LA galaxy was Dave Denholm. Den Dave Denholm was, um, was, and is a radio personality, um, who has done Southern California radio, uh, who was, uh, at ESPN for a while. And he did oh, wow. an LA galaxy podcast, um, when he was at ESPN, it was like one of the first podcasts. This is pre 2009 podcasts almost weren't a thing. Yeah. Right. So one of the first ones ever was Dave Denholm and he did it for a while and then it went away because realistically there was nobody there to listen. And yeah. Understood. This was before the whole podcast boom. So when we came on because somebody asked us to do one and I had a co-host at the time or, or a friend uh, at the time, uh, Jared Dubois, who we had never met in person before we even started doing the podcast. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I remember that name. Yeah. So, so Jared, so Jared and I, um, you know, started doing this and it was horrible. Our first couple of months, just, just ridiculously bad. And we sent it to the guy who asked for it. We're like, here it is. It's bad. You don't need to do anything with it. We understand yeah. the whole deal. Thanks for, thanks for thinking of us. Really appreciate it. And, and the guy goes, the guy publishes it and goes, okay, give me another one for next week. And it's like, okay, so I guess we're going to do this. <laughs> and so we got better and, you know, obviously we did it. And so we had taken off. So by the time we got to 2013, um, I was, my first year in the press box was 2012. So I'd started to understand who the who the people were i knew okay. some of the players I, I you know i i had developed some relationships in there and so you sending me that was like the first time anybody sent me something that one meant anything i mean really was sort of like hey this is real like yeah. i i talk about a game and i podcast for fun um life is not serious for me 99 percent of the time i don't have to take it seriously and here's yeah. somebody who is going through a tough time in their life and i have a chance to make it better just a little bit. And I'm like, you know, it's not going to be much, but it, it'll, it'll be a little bit. And I also want to see how much pull I have around the organization <laughs> to see what I can get. Yeah, of course. Right. And so I emailed because yeah, you got to test it out. You can't just you, not, you, you don't know. I mean, I figured, you know, at the time I was sort of like, I'd sit in the corner and I wouldn't say, I wouldn't ask questions and Bruce Arena scared me and you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and, and we would do that and it was fine. And I was just sort of in awe of everything. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. We, were, we were young men back then, Jesse. <laughs> um, so, you know, the, the whole deal. And so <clears throat> I remember going to the galaxy and saying, Hey, I have a listener who's going through a tough time. I get sort of told, run down, ran down your story. And I said, yeah. I have an Omar Gonzalez bobblehead here at the studio at my well, studio at that time. It was like my upstairs uh, room much like it is here. Um, and I go, I have one. How about I bring it and can you get it signed by Omar? And then I want to send it to him. And they're, they're like, yeah, absolutely. No problems. And so then I went around the room and got like a whole bunch of just basically like season ticket stuff that had been yeah. given to me or stuff like that. I threw it all in a box. Um, and then I went to the galaxy and I took my Omar bobblehead. And uh, one of the guys is like, here you go. It's all taken care of. And I'm like, I'm like, cool. And I go, we'll just have them sign this. And they're like, no, no, we got you. We got you one already. Here it is. We just had him sign one he had and we just oh, wow, gave nice. it to you to do it. So the galaxy gave you that one. I didn't have to part with one of mine, which was nice. you know, yeah, whew. See, almost I never, I never one. knew that part. Almost had to give something away, Jesse. How dare I? Um, but no, threw a whole bunch of other stuff in the in the box, and then we just, just sent you a box. It wasn't a big box, but there was a whole bunch of little things in there that were the galaxy. Dude, it meant I opened it and I I remember. You know, I saw it was from you and I thought, oh, cool. I just thought it was really cool that you even thought about sending something. And I was like, oh, the, you know, whatever it is, I'm going to love it. And then I opened it up and it was, um, I think it was a couple scarves, yep, which probably. I still have. Uh -huh. It was uh, some of the stickers from Corner of the Galaxy. And then I, I see think the, I think those were the original stickers, by the way. If you still have those collector's items, for sure. I think I think I have two. I think they're in my file cabinet i believe so, i believe i still have them somebody just sent me a dm who was moving and sent me a picture of one of the original stickers that oh we really had, like in the <laughs> it was in the box format not in the circle format and stuff nice. like that. They're like look what i just found and i'm like i'm like oh my god that's amazing so yeah i know now i know of three in existence the two that you have there you go and and, and the one that john arnold has in his filing cabinet apparently 
and then I pulled out, I pull out the bobblehead and I see, you know, Omar Gonzalez. I was like, oh, wow, he's one of my favorite players. Right. This is really cool. And then Ali goes, did he sign it? And I went, no. And then I looked and I went, oh, my God. And I started like tearing up and I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Because I had never, first off, I had never gone through anything like that. Right. And then to see somebody like you, which I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know you enough to just be like, hey, can you send me this or that? Right. And then for you to send it, dude, it meant the world to me. And I still have all of it. And every time I, every time I look at it, you know, like if I'm moving stuff around, I'll tell Allie, Hey, remember that one time when Josh, like, yeah, (laughs) I remember like, Oh, that's, that's really sweet. So I wanted to tell you on air. Hmm. Thank you very much. And I wanted to share that little story with you. No, I mean, thank you for that. Uh, It, it, because you definitely impacted my life with not only the show, but sending me the gift. That was I amazing. mean, the, the gift is a, is like throwaway stuff. It, I mean, it means something to you and it, and it certainly means something. It's just my 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 saying that is that I, I was hoping the gesture would be more than just what the gift was. And that, you know, if, oh, yeah, if you were having a, a tough time, maybe it would just help a little bit. Right. That oh, was, it that was all I was supposed to be doing a couple of um, times. I took the bobblehead. I think I took it twice to my treatment and mm-hmm. I put it on the little table right. that I had. And then, you know, like I'd wear one of the scarves. Mm-hmm. Just because I, it was, again, it was, I'm listening to, to the podcast right? and I have these little things that mean something to me because I, I mean, I love the galaxy. Right. And I guess I said, I, or I guess I should say I loved the galaxy. Uh, yeah. Cause you, cause you moved on. Cause you're, you're cheating on, on them now with somebody else. Who are you cheating on them? You're in Vegas. There's no MLS team there. No, but AJ's with the revolution now. I, yeah, well, you're an AJ De La Garza fan. I mean, yeah. there's pl- listen. There's plenty of LA Galaxy fans who are AJ De La Garza fans, and he's Very back true. with Bruce and Kurt. And I mean, it's just which is crazy. But, yeah, I mean, we, you, you, it was he, AJ was either going to come back to the Galaxy, which I think a lot of people were hoping, or he was going to go to Bruce. I mean, him going to Bruce was with New England was not a surprise, and yeah. everybody was like, "Duh!" As soon as it <laughs> happened, because Bruce did that whenever he got he got the Galaxies. He went out and got guys who he knew who they were who knew like what, sort of what they could do and bring them onto the team. So him getting AJ was, was nothing. So, yeah. um, and, and, and the, the connection that of course that I have with AJ one is covering the team. AJ was one of the second guests I think we ever had on the podcast. I think the oh, first wow. one was, okay. was, was Brian Jordan. Um, and then we got AJ and then I think we ran through all the, all the bros there, which was like AJ and Sean Franklin. Um, Hector. And, yeah, yeah, I think Hector. Maybe I don't know if we ever got Hector on or not. Um, but I'm trying yeah, to get Hector on this. Hector, Hector's great. I mean, that's another guy who's like you know always a galaxy underrated galaxy player. Oh yeah. Um, but but you know that thing. But then my wife went to the University of Maryland, and oh that's she, right. And she was there when Omar and AJ, and AJ played. There. And AJ played. Not only that, she was AJ's either upstairs or downstairs neighbor in the dorm. Oh really? Yeah, I confirmed this one time. She was she was mortified, but we went to an event and I got to bring my wife and yeah. I, I grabbed AJ. I'm like, AJ, this is my wife. She says, I'm like, she, I'm like, she was full of it the whole time. I'm catching this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get her on this. I'm like, she says that you were her that she, you know, you, she was your upstairs neighbor or downstairs yeah. neighbor. And he's like, Yep, I think I remember you. And I was like, no way, it's oh, true. Wow. Yeah, so you so. weren't lying. Okay. I see, yeah, I know. So you know, <laughs> then I married her. So, you know, that was the test. If she was yeah, lying about course. AJ, she was gone, but um, and then that so, night yeah. when you said, will you marry me? Okay, yes, yes let's let's go. That's right. I was like, this is that was your test right there. AJ <laughs> said it was okay. I asked him. And so um, so we did that. But no, I mean, yeah, it's it's it, going back to, to the stuff. It was it was fun for me to do that. It's still fun for me to do that. Although I will tell you that this year it has been a lot less fun just in trying to do that, because instead of getting the stuff where maybe we can help out an individual um, it's been helping out families who have lost uh, family members to COVID. I've yeah. probably I've probably tweeted out and and done and and contributed to Galaxy fans maybe four or five different ones in just the last maybe six months. And like it's that type of stuff where it's like I really want to help and you really want to try to do something because um, it, it it means so much to these people. Yeah. And I can just see everybody getting just just beat over the head with it and it, it's tough i mean uh one of the guys probably around the same time you that that we met or, or that we started hanging out um one of the guys uh i had met i met him and his dad i remember like one of the first people i ever really met was this guy and his dad um 
And I found out that his dad passed away to COVID, you know, like last month and stuff like that. And oh, wow. he, his family needed help with the whole thing. And so, you know, we were able to push that one over the line. They needed like $20,000 and the galaxy family sort of came together with that and with the podcast pushing stuff and helping out. Um, oh, and of nice. course, his friends and family, I think we got it up over $25,000 or something like that, which is great. Oh, but, great. but you see other ones that also need that help that are, yeah. that are like, that you can't push across the line, no matter how much you sort of try to do that. And so, um, I'm glad that it made a, a difference and I'm glad that we can, we can help. Like I said, this is supposed to be a fun game. This is supposed to be inconsequential. Um, but the people who are around our podcast, who are around the LA galaxy, um, they, they come together for these things. And so I, I was, the galaxy jumped on the chance to do it. Um, and so, and you know, luckily it turned out well this time. Cause I have, I think there was one before you where we sort of threw our weight behind something. Um, and it turned out, uh, the girl was, uh, catfishing people pretending to be other people. And she had lied about all this stuff. And I think Mike McGee gave her a Jersey what? because we had, a, Oh dude, it's a crazy story. And I, I don't know, there might be like, um, non-disclosure agreements between everybody <laughs> now, whenever you go through it, but yes, craziness, oh, craziness. Yes. She was pretending to be her brother. Here, okay, here, here's the, here's the basic. Let me, I'll do basic real quick. Okay. She, she said that she had a job where a killer whale jumped on her or something like that, or that flipped the boat and then she got hurt. And then she also had a brain tumor. I think that's correct. Um, and so then we were trying to help her and do stuff. And at that time she was also catfishing one of my friends who was, who was a girl. Uh, and she was saying that she was her fake brother. So the catfish girl was, was her fake, was her fake brother who was climbing Mount Everest. I love this because the more you say things closer what? together, it makes no sense. <laughs> that's insane. I think we were all drunk during those like <laughs> six months that everything happened. That's the only thing I can sort of say, oh, but that is the crazy. general gist of things. Um, yeah. And then of course she, she moved away to become a fan of a rival team. So there you go. Oof. Yeah. Yes. Good times. Right. Okay. That's a, that, Man. That's a ride. So that time when we it helped out like... didn't work out so well. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was before you sent me the stuff. Yes. Yes. I oh, think it was. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. So see, we... I can only hold See now. Now I can imagine you going, fuck, I hope this guy has cancer. I hope he has cancer. I hope he has cancer. <laughs> then you meet me and you're like, oh, hey, okay. You really did. Okay. okay. Thank God. Normal people. <laughs> well, my wife always laughs because there, there's two types of people whenever it comes to like social media, there's people who are exactly like their social media. Um, presence. And there are people who are nothing like their social media presence, right? Like the complete polar opposite. Like yeah. you'll have somebody who's really outgoing on social media and they use a lot of exclamation marks, which is me. Um, and then, um, and then you I go and sometimes. meet them. Yeah. I, I like exclamation marks. They're fun. Um, and then you go meet them and they're like this little quiet person who stands off in the corner and isn't anything like, it. or they're exactly like their thing. Um, I would yeah. like to think I'm exactly like my social media, which is, uh, hopefully a representation of me. But um, I said that I met you and Allie. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, we should hang out with them. And she's like, oh, soccer people. And I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 no. These are normal people. Yeah. These are normal people. Thank like, you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I mean, as normal as we can get for, for you guys. But um, I think the first time we went out, wasn't it? Didn't we go see a play? Yes, we did. I think that we was did. a yeah. good play. Which was it? Was it the thriller? Was it the psychological thriller? It was Wolf something. It was. Um... It was some sort of a thriller. Yes. All I all a... I remember is going. Okay, so let me let me yes let me share something with you here, and let me be honest. When you said we should go to this musical, I thought, "Fuck, I don't want to go to musical." Right, right. But I was like, you know what? Let me get out of my comfort zone. Let's go do this. Mm -hmm. And before we had a couple drinks, and then after we had a couple drinks, and we had a great time. Yes. So we go and it starts. And I mean, from the beginning, that musical was, was great. Okay, good. I, good. Was, I, I was looking at it and I, and I look over at Allie and I go, this is, this is really good. So then, you know, intermission comes and then we're talking about it. I'm like, did you, did you see that? Did you, whoa, that's crazy. And then the end of it comes and I was like, oh, that was, that was amazing. Right. I, did, right. I, did, I didn't think I was going to like it. I, I loved it. I, I always say, uh, this was back whenever my sister worked at a theater. So we got, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure we got those tickets for free. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> sure we, we didn't spend any money on that. Um, but, uh, I, I always said that if I didn't do a galaxy podcast, I would probably do something on musical theater, which is, I, I shouldn't, I have no qualifications to do whatsoever. <laughs> um, but I do like, I like straight plays and I like, I like musical theater. I like musicals, that type of thing, but I'm glad you guys came and, and we did hang out that fun. way. My, my favorite, um, 
memory that we have though is is one of my favorite stories a story i've told so many times on the podcast that people get okay. sick of hearing it and i don't care i will tell it again because i enjoy this story uh it was the celebration i think it was the celebration after the 2014 mls cup okay <laughs> i, I want to say that was correct uh they had it down at manhattan beach right it was oh uh, yeah it was down there they had the little like they had a concert or or a thing it wasn't even a concert it was like a rally yeah. um in the yeah evening. they had the stage yeah, Out exactly. There, yeah, yeah. And so I went down to cover it and and do my my reporting thing so I could do it. And that was fun. No problems. And so that got over with and it was hey, good time. Everybody was having a good time. So we went to a bar, I think, and we had a couple beers and I'm like, sweet, this is awesome. We'll do this. And then uh, we were all hungry and we're like, hey, you're like, hey, I know a place that has some great tacos. Oh, I, oh and, OK. Yeah. So we yes, were. Uh, yes. It Go was you Hermosa it Beach. That was what it was. Yes. We wait. That's where they had the whole rally and stuff. And then all the players. And that was my first. That year is when I met AJ De La Garza. Right. So I met him the beginning of the season. So this, that whole friendship was, was still new. Right. So at the event, I say hi to him real quick. Cause he was like, Oh, I got to go do some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So they go upstairs. Uh, where was it? It was the Irish, Irish place bar. down there at the, at the end of the at the end of the the thing, but but I think we were downstairs, right? We had we yes. had beers downstairs. You knew, didn't you? Know, guys, know the barkeep, the the yes. the the bar the bar Mikey. guy. What? Yeah, Mikey. So so we got there, so we got beers, and that was great, and it was a whole deal. But I was hungry, and it was getting late. And you're like, I know a place that has good tacos, and so I think we uh -huh. walked over to. Is it the deck? The deck, yes. Okay, so which which I believe at the time was owned by somebody owned by somebody who was or or at least operated by somebody who was working with the LA Galaxy there was a connection there was a galaxy connection somewhere in there so Megan not yes. Megan AJ's wife right our other friend Megan she mm -hmm. is or she was yeah i think she's still a bartender there okay she was bartending that night yes and her husband at the time mm -hmm. was um he worked Cameraman. with Landon yeah, wasn't wasn't it? It was one of the cameramans. With, can't, can't, that's the cameraman. actual last name. It, it's cameraman, but there's yeah. twins. Yes, there's twins, and one of the cameramans works for U.S. Soccer, and yes. one of them works worked for the L.A. Galaxy. Every time I see his brother, or every time yes. I would see his brother, I'd go, "Wait, that's not wait, David. That's not." Yeah, huh? no, it was. Yeah, it was. It was always weird because I was always like, "Wait, the U.S. Soccer guy is the gal? Is it the, they're the same? No, they're <laughs> twins. Okay, cool. Yes. So, so, so she was married. Yes, the cameraman. Mm -hmm. that's how when we went over there mm -hmm. you know I, I was like oh they have great tacos mm -hmm. so we get some tacos and then she says hey do you guys want to do you guys want to see the cup and that's right the cup pictures? got brought out and i went wait what and she's like yeah uh i'll just have him bring the cup and i said you mean the mls cup yes and she yes. goes yeah mm -hmm. the guy brings it in he puts it on the table for us and goes okay you guys have like 30 minutes with it yeah okay yeah i know and, uh, and so you did that there's there's you're, you're missing you remember, in my, in my opinion who, who, who uh, came in and took a shot with us i remember who came and had tacos with me because it's yeah. a story that i talk about constantly and forever <laughs> um and uh and dave sarakin popped in yes and dave and i had known each other enough through me reporting that he recognized me whenever he came in he's like hey he goes i heard they have great tacos here then like dave they have the best tacos because we had already been eating the tacos and i have a story about the tacos too so don't let me miss that okay um so and then dave sarakin who was the associate head coach for the la galaxy he was an assistant under yeah. arena i uh, came in there and so we got to have tacos with dave sarakin because why yeah. not after a 2014 mls cup you get to talk to dave sarakin and I got to just BS with them. It was great. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my claims to fame is that Dave Sarakin uh, and I had tacos. Not only did that lead to tacos, but eventually Dave gave me uh, his cell phone number as as I was covering the team. And so Dave used to come on the podcast a lot. And oh, nice. whenever I had whenever I had questions, I could just text Dave and yeah. sort of find out stuff. And he would set me straight whenever I was wrong, and, you know, all that, <laughs> which happens all the time. That's great. We love that. Whenever a player tells you, dude, you're so far off base. This is what's really happening. It's like, oh, yeah. thank you. Good. I'm glad I will be smarter next time. Um, Let me Dave, tell you. Yes. Well, OK, no, go ahead. And you, do you, you said, do you want to hear my taco story? Yes. Let yes. me finish tacos. OK. So the guy we got tacos from, um, the tacos Actor, were I so think, right? absolutely correct. I was going to say, I still remember it. I still remember. Yeah. One of the reasons I remember Hector is I got his card that night because the tacos 
were so delicious. And I asked him if he did catering and he was like, yeah. And I go, do you ever come down to Orange County? He goes, oh no, it's too far. Right. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what if we made it worth your while? Would you come down to Orange County? He's like, well, maybe we'll see. There was a party later that year at my parents' house and I got Hector to come down. Hector has been and catered my parents' house and I think one or two of my friends' weddings what? Um, ever since that. Because like whenever he says he won't come down to Orange County, he's like, he, he's like, well, I charge like $7 a person or $9 yeah. a person or something like that to come down. He goes, if I came down to Orange County, I'd have to charge like eleven dollars per person and when you do the math on that there's like that's no money like, yeah. whenever you figure out how many and they're the best tacos and i still dream about those tacos on a regular basis do so, you yes. have him for your parents uh christmas party probably yeah, yes i think he might have been a christmas party um or 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 it was or it was one of those um uh, i'm embarrassed to say what the what my parents called their parties in august <laughs> and you may have been <laughs> They call it hot August nights, which definitely okay. sounds like a 1980s porn. And I'm like, you guys got to stop calling it that. And nope, the email that's goes great. out every August called oh, hot August great. nights. So thank God the pandemic you know, was good for one thing. It stopped that for a little while. <laughs> Something good came out of it. Yes. yes. Sir. I was going to say that year you invited me to the Christmas party. Mm -hmm. I was excited to go. And mm -hmm. then I ended up picking up a trip. Yep. Because when I'm, when I get into work mode, mm -hmm. I go, Oh, I have, I have things I want to do. Right. And I schedule them. Right. But not really. And then I go, okay. So I had, I had your party at the end of the week. And I think either a Melbourne or a Sydney popped in. And all yeah, I like saw was, you know, I'm on the computer. I go, oh, cool. Pick up. Yep. So I picked it up. I'm like, perfect. I'm good. And then I went, oh shit. Now I can't go to the party. You, you missed I think that's when you told me you had the tacos. I think it was probably the tacos. It, it was so tacos there. Um, Hector actually did. I think our our welcome party for my my second marriage to to my wife who's downstairs. Oh, nice. Yeah, so he did. That. I mean, we're talking about Hector has been in, involved in serious parts of the Guessman family, you know, progression here. Uh, through the as soon as this pandemic is over, Hector's gonna get a call to come back down because I know, was gonna say, when was the last time you had the tacos? Because now last, I'm feening for him. Yeah, I know. It was probably it was probably like not last summer, but the summer before because you know okay. we've been shut down for a year. Yeah. But but basically, yeah. I mean, I, I get I get that feeling for those tacos all the time. So every once in a while I'm like non pandemic times, I would be tell my wife, I'm like, we need we need to go up to the deck and see if he's there. Like he might be there. Like I forget. I think I can text him and or call him and be like, Are you gonna be there? And then I can I can go there and just get tacos, which oh, is ridiculous. So but but God bless the next that man time, tacos. The next time you have a party and he's gonna be there. Yes. Um I'm in, uh, maybe I can I invite say, myself. Are you, in, are you inviting yourself? That maybe? seems, that seems crude, but yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Hey, like, he, I mean, uh, I'm here for the tacos. I'm out. Thank you guys. <laughs> I think, I think maybe he did the baby. Did he do the baby shower? He might've done the baby shower the, the last fall, um, like in October, uh, yeah. not last year, but the year before, before, uh, my son Jake was born. He may have done the baby shower. I can't remember hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure that was probably it. So yeah. Those tacos tacos crazy. Man. Yeah, but see that I would never have had those tacos, and those tacos would not be part of my life had it not been for you and Dave Sarakin. I I mostly blame Dave Sarakin because why would I give you credit? But <laughs> Dave Sarakin. So the other question I want to ask you is, how did were you always a Galaxy fan? No. How did that happen? <clears throat> I played baseball. Okay. So I played soccer um, for most of my life, played soccer all the way through like my junior year in high school, uh, played baseball for all my life was a much better baseball player than I was a soccer player. Um, so I had thoughts of, of possibly walking on at Arizona state, which is where I went to college for a while. Uh, realized that that's a lot of work because I was a dumb teenager who was like, you could play a game for a living. Why would you, why would you want to do that? No. Um, so uh, I went to school, got done with that. Uh, got heavily into college football. Uh, was a big Arizona State guy, even whenever I came back and moved back to California, because my my wife at the time, my ex-wife now, was a flight attendant for Southwest. Um, I could fly two games, like no big deal. It would yeah. just be a thing. I'd have a buddy pick me up and go to that. So I would do that for a while. Um, but I was getting fat and lazy because I wasn't doing any sports and stuff like that. So I'm like, I'm going to join a 35 and older soccer league okay. because they're allowed a certain number of unders and I can be an under. So I think I was like 26 at the time or 25 at the time. So I've 10 done that years before. Up. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. you're allowed to have like four unders on the field. So yeah. I was an under. So that was great. So I started doing that. So one time in 2008, 
um, late in the season, probably in 2008, they're like, hey, we're going to go to a Galaxy game. Uh, the, the, the over 35 team. And I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. Uh, is that safe? Am I going to get stabbed? Literally, this is, <laughs> I'm, I'm such a moron. Um, I just, I was in a bubble. I lived in a bubble and it was one of those, right? And I'm like, You're thinking it's like, a, it's like a Dodger game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sitting Raider out game. in the outfield. Yeah, yeah exactly, right? <laughs> like what's going to happen? And so they're like, come on, we'll go. We'll get group tickets. So we went and I think we sat up in the, in the upper concourse on the, on the east side and we went and I think the Galaxy lost like seven to two. Oh, Most wow. exciting thing that I got to see. I was like, this is amazing. Why do I not have season tickets to this? So uh, I went uh, I went back to the office and we have a family business that I work at. Um, and so I, I go to my dad, I'm like, why do we not have Galaxy tickets? Like we should have season tickets. And he's like, well, how much are they? And so I told him, he's like, well, that's like no, we had, we have tickets to theater. We have tickets to angels baseball. Yeah. At the time we were thinking about maybe getting some hockey tickets, right? Some ducks Ooh, and do a okay. little ducks. And that would have been fun. Right. But whenever I told him what the cost of the galaxy tickets were, he was like, he was like, well, okay, go ahead and get them. Like, I don't care yeah. the whole deal. So we, so we started, I think in 2008 in that area. And so I started going to games and really I started, I had a, a friend who I played soccer with on that team who we became really good friends. And so he and I would go up and use the tickets all the time and just enjoy nice. it and had a good time. So we got locked in and hooked on it for a while. And, you know, we came in right at the worst time at 2008, which was the absolute, like sort of, well, it used to be the absolute bottom. There's new bottoms now, but that was yeah. the absolute bottom. Bruce Arena came in at the end of 2008 and we're like, oh, I wonder what Bruce is going to do. And then he started to revamp the team. And in 2009, next so thing I know. started in 2008 and then 2009, yeah. they go to MLS Cup. And I was there. I was at MLS Cup. I my wow. I, for, for Christmas, I said, "Hey, mom, for Christmas, just buy me this MLS Cup ticket." And so, yeah. my my buddy Chad found the tickets, and his family lived in Seattle, so because oh, it was in great. Seattle at the time, yeah. right? And so he's like, "We can stay with them." So we're like, "Um, we we non rev no brainer." Yeah, we non revved up there, right? We oh, we bought our geez, tickets on the way. Look at that. Yeah. I, we, we bought our tickets on the way back because we were like, we knew that we had to get back for work on yeah. the Monday. Cause I think it was a Sunday evening game. Yeah. And so we knew we had to get back on Monday. And so we bought those tickets. Um, and then, so we non revved up there, almost didn't get on a flight in, in Oakland that would have screwed Ooh. some things up, but we made it no problems. Um, hung around. So the craziest that's, let's see, that was, that was that trip. So we went, uh, the galaxy losing a penalty kick shootout, man, the Donovan yeah. missed, uh, Donovan Ricketts broke his arm. He, we, he broke his arm, I think right in front of us. We were right about Ooh. three rows off the field in the corner. Um, and heartbreaking. The, the, the best part was I went home on Southwest. So I went back through Oakland, um, and went down and the galaxy were playing salt Lake. Right. And this yeah. was, this was before they, this is when they did neutral site MLS cups. Chad flew on Delta through salt lake city so Ooh. his flight home was full of our celebrating rsl fans and horrible. he was like and he was like this is the worst thing ever and i'm like i'm sorry i don't i don't know what to tell you so um horrible. so yeah so anyway and 2009 was the year that we started the podcast um they were only half hour shows and we did it like once a week most weeks like every once in a while we wouldn't have one um which is hysterical because i do two shows a week now and they're each an hour at least an hour yeah um but you know that half hour thing really helped us sort of find a groove and, and get to the point of things and not mumble and not, this is what I have to think on this <laughs> subject today. It, we Hopefully we don't do that as much um, anymore, but yeah, that was it. So that was 2009, then 2010 hits and the LA galaxy won the supporter shield, but get knocked out by Dallas. So that was another thing. And then 2011 MLS cup winner, 2012 MLS cup winner, 2013, little off year, little reset, Bruce resets, 2014 yeah. MLS cup winner. Um, in 2014, I had a chance to go to the white house. I think in 2015, I had a chance to go to the white house to cover the LA galaxy what? Uh, under, under president Obama when they were there with the Kings. And I was like, yeah, but you know, it's a long way to go and it's going to be expensive and the whole deal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Josh. I'm, I'm a fucking moron. I don't know what oh, to tell you. Man. That's, that is, that is one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't go and, and do that. So this is, this is what I hope for you. Yes. That you get that opportunity again. Yeah. and you do it I, I i it's one of the things that obviously is it would be high on my list of things to yeah do. so um yeah it was it was one of those but yeah i kicked that can down the curve oh well the uh, LA galaxy will get back to mls cup again no problems <laughs> oh to be young and stupid um so yeah so i mean you know that's that that was sort of how i got locked into all that stuff and and started paying attention and certainly started from the fan perspective we've shifted a little bit in terms of what i do just because i i do cover the the la galaxy i think fairly uh i would like to say unbiased but i'm certainly like rooted in the fact that i can't where i came from so yeah. um 
I, I think I have a perspective that not a lot of people have, which is that uh, I get the news. I can understand the news. I call the galaxy out when they make mistakes all the time, which is not a problem for me. It doesn't hurt my feelings. I yeah. hurt their feelings, but it, it doesn't hurt mine. Um, and, you know, I hope I'm not like the, the classic Homer. I'm not. They released a kit today that I quite honestly think is the best kit that they ever released in the ever. And I said that. Right. Um, and, when I and, saw it, my first my first reaction to the kit was you know that that's the kit that i saw growing up it's 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 almost i mean it's a modern take on the 1997 home kit which is like well it it's so nice well i think it's so nice that i'm gonna i'm gonna buy i'm gonna buy a jersey yeah well oh mr mr i'm not a galaxy fan anymore are you gonna get aj aj's number on it you you know 20, 20 on the back right before right before i called you i was thinking i was like you know what I would like to do that, but I don't want to live in the past. Uh, that's good. That's good. So I'm I'm definitely going to get a current Galaxy right. player. Mm-hmm. Now I just don't know who. Yes, it's it's a tough one. It's a, it's I, I I couldn't um I you know I, I I've started uh, collecting more like of the older Galaxy stuff just because uh, eventually I'd like to have a nice uh, office in my house that has. Yeah sort of these jerseys as the backdrop to do my podcast and stuff. I'm never stopping That'd podcasting. Cool. I hope that I'm podcasting when I'm 90 something years old and I'm still covering the LA galaxy. And they go, do you know who that is sitting in the corner? They're like, no, no. They're like, that's Josh Gessman. He started a podcast in 2009. Hasn't left since he just, he shows up every game. He gets, he gets his cookies <laughs> at halftime. He, he yells a oh, little yeah. bit about some, some of the young whippersnapper coaches. And then he, <laughs> he, he moves off into the thing. That's, that's my goal in life right there. That's my, that's I want to try to plan. get some jerseys to put around in yeah the my studio studio slash yes spare room <laughs> I, I mean you know the pandemic I, it's funny because you know that uh, at my office at work is where i normally do podcasts and stuff yes. like that but with the pandemic one and two my wife saying that i probably should be home to help take care of the the young whippersnapper uh, on yeah. occasion i can't just stay at work until 9 30 or 10 p.m on thursday <laughs> night which shows. is what i yes we're recording shows <laughs> Um, and doing that stuff. And, you know, the dude goes to bed at by seven. So um, you, you miss that time. So I've had to shift here. So now the our goal is to um, is to eventually move. And then I get to build basically my home podcast studio that will oh, have, cool. you know, the lighting and all the stuff that I have at my office. Which yeah. Is, oh, that'd which be awesome. Fun. So but yeah, so I've started collecting that stuff. So the the night this this throwback this modern take on a throwback is, is probably one that will end up in my collection just because uh, I understand sort of what yeah. that means to the history of the galaxy and why it just became, I think the, the fastest or the best kit launch ever in MLS history, that type of thing. So anyway, your listeners are talking nice. about soccer and, and, and kits that they've never seen before. I mean, if they haven't seen it, you guys should get online and check it out. Corner of the galaxy.com. There's an article up there just, just in case. I, I see professional plug. Did you like that? I like that. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I'm learning a lot from you. Just, just segues. It's all about the segues. Yes. You know, I could, I could easily pick chicharitos. Right. Right. You could. That would be that. That would be the easy pick. It would be. But see, here's the other thing. I don't know. I mean, I know Sebastian's on the team. So, so Seba is, is a good choice. Definitely a fan favorite. I'll tell you the, the strong choice right now among amongst people is, is the young 19 year old right back, Mr. Julian Araujo. Um, Oh yeah. Recently featured in the, in the, on the front page of the LA times. Oh, wow. uh, uh, As, as he has used his platform to help uh, migrant farm workers uh, up in the, uh, the central Valley or, or in the Lompoc area, the sort of in that area, uh, he's decided to take this on and, and is doing it. He's doing a great job. He's 19 years old, way smarter than me, uh, way more driven than me. Um, just a great kid who's really sort of grown up as a man. And I would imagine that that dude will be with the galaxy for maybe another 12 months. And then he's adios off to Europe because he's you that think? good. Yeah. Yeah, there was already sniffs around him that he might. Uh, Juventus was possibly interested. Um, oh, nice! I know there's some German clubs. There was, I think, maybe a there. There may have been a Liverpool mention in there. I can't remember if I'm getting him confused with a, a, another uh, another team. But yeah, so Julian Araujo, number two, same as one Mr. Todd Donovan, if you Ooh, if you yes. remember back in the day. Oh yeah. Um. So so yeah, it's a that's kind of a fun one to get if you if you wanted to go with that. Okay. Right. I mean, I I was thinking also Steris. Uh, 
Dan, you know, Dan's an OC boy. Um, that's now, no, the he's reason- not in- no, he's not an OC boy. I guess Dave Romney was the OC guy. Uh, Dan yeah. is a Southern California guy. Um, I, w- I was so. I was thinking Stairs because I met him a couple times. And Great I was guy. like, I just think like sometimes that's where my brain goes. If I see somebody, right, I'm like, oh yeah, I've met him before. He's really nice. He's re- he's nice. Yeah, that's that's where my mind goes to. Right, and then so you know, g- aside from everybody, like you know, if it was like David Beckham. Yeah, all those yes, yes. like big all the, names, all the big names, Zlatan. Zlatan. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, Dan, he... Dan, and his new—he just got married. Uh, they live not too far away from me, actually, where I'm here right now. So, oh, nice. Yeah, I'm sure I will eventually run into them. We're we're that close, so you know, then I'll have to be like, <laughs> "Don't I know you? Have I talked to you? You? Before? <laughs> you? Do do nobody? You, nobody know? Nobody can recognize anybody with their masks on. It's just it, it's all True. all nuts and crazy. So you, it's I the wear, best time to be a celebrity. You can just, I wear my mask, and then sometimes mm-hmm. I wear a hat. So, so then all you see is the eyes, those smoldering and eyes. Then if, if I if I have a sweater on, then it's even better because then nobody can tell because of my you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I know you're constantly hounded because of this show. Seven shows in, and you already ran out of good guests. I would just like you know, to. No, no, up. don't even yes. say that. No, I'm saving. I'm saving. This is like the. This is the sandwich. This is the, the sandwich. middle. The good stuff is in the middle. I'm. I'm like the. I'm like the part of the sandwich that squeezed out and fell on the plate that you're gonna eat later. You'll be happy about not it. At all. It'll not be a surprise, but you're. It's like not the what you're really hoping to get. So. No, no, not at all. I was gonna ask you, what did you think about Zlatan's time at the Galaxy? Ah. <sighs> Well, from a from a coverage perspective, from being a reporter and talking to him, um, amazing, so much fun, uh, really nice to me, really nice to a lot of people that I saw him interact with, um, which was uh, I would say uh, 180 degrees from what actually happened in the locker room. Um, but you know, in terms of how he treated me, he was great and he was fun. And my position, it's funny because whenever we're in the scrum in the locker rooms, um, usually people stand in the same places. It's, it's weird. And if somebody like stands in your spot, you're like, what, what, you know, it's like grade school. You're like, uh, we have assigned yeah. seats here, so you're going to have to move somewhere. <laughs> so my, my assigned spot is always up against the whiteboard on the very, like right next to the player. That's why I like okay. to stand right next to him. That I get good things, but I'm not going to lie. Every time I see when I see the interviews and I see them on YouTube and then I see you, I'm like, there's Josh, there's Josh, right. there's Josh, yeah. he's right there. <laughs> I do that too. Same thing. I show my wife, look, there I am. There I am. Look at, <laughs> look at this on the phone. She's like, I, I know what you look like. Um, but with Zlatan, uh, it was great because he would always come in and he's a giant of a man. I mean, just so tall. He's six foot five. Uh, his wingspan is probably six foot five. I swear it is so long so he would talk with his hand sometimes and his hand would like go right past my face so i'd be like moving oh, out wow. of the way and, and like ducking like that and uh, a couple of times he, he, he would like sort of put his hand on my shoulder he's, he's like you're getting faster you know that type of thing like i would move out of the way and he's like yeah he's like testing me so he was great in terms of that always good for a sound bite um i think you know there's a there's a lot of discussion within the fan base about whether or not uh the galaxy were just a soft team a soft mental team and they couldn't handle zlatan's constant uh berating uh how i would i tend to push back against that if you went to work every day where somebody screamed at you and told you you weren't doing your job right you probably wouldn't enjoy work all that much and in my mind zlatan had people he didn't like and yeah. he made it very well known that he didn't like you. So for all the Galaxy fans who were like, oh, well, the Galaxy should have kept Zlatan. I don't think Zlatan was coming back. And I don't think the Galaxy wanted them back. So it was a, it was time for them to go their other ways. Yeah. And obviously yeah. he's with uh, AC Milan and, and Serie A and doing ridiculous things at our, our age, Jesse. He's, he's our age. Um, I'm 39, so he is as old as me. Uh, and if I tried to do what he did, I would be in the hospital. Yeah, um, I mean, there's things that I try to do at the gym now, and then the next day I'm like, I can't fucking move. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. That was that was stupid. Uh, the yeah. first time, the first time I met Zlatan, it was AJ came into play. Houston came into play. It was a night game. AJ got us some amazing seats. Right. He got us down in the uh, the tunnel before they come out, and and you know we're walking on the field and going to our seats, and I was like, yo, man. Like, these are nice seats you know we got to see everything i didn't like it mostly because aj gave up both of the goals uh-huh 
that led to them winning two to one. Okay. Okay. So I wasn't happy. Top night. Top night. He wasn't AJ. happy. Yes. Uh, but the, when he came out and I saw him, I just I looked up and I thought, holy shit. Dude just this keeps guy's going. Fucking huge. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's funny because and in, his in, calves were like he his body is the temple. Um, yeah. I mean, washboard stomach. He, he's he's ridiculous. And it, it's funny because so many times in Major League Soccer, it's not like whenever you go to a hockey game or if you go to a football game or if you even go to like an NBA game where there are just monsters that are are lurking around. I mean, MLS guys are pretty average size like i'm yeah. taller than a lot of guys which makes me feel good um whenever i'm in Same. the locker room Same. yeah right it's like it's like <laughs> I can, yeah i can play this game i'm, just, I'm taller than you um and, and you look at that and soccer isn't necessarily a size sport but there are some big players i remember whenever i think tottenham came to play um the la galaxy and you saw their starting lineup and then you saw the la galaxy starting lineup and everybody in their starting lineup was like over six foot and you know the galaxy are starting guys like five two five four <laughs> and you're like they're gonna get killed and yeah. they did. And, and there's a big gap there between the English Premier League and Major League Soccer, certainly. Um, but whenever you see Zlatan, you get that. It's like, well, who's going to guard him? Nobody. And it's like, okay, so which two guys are going to guard him? Mm, yeah. Probably nobody. And so what he was able to do and what we witnessed um, was the single most dominant goal scorer in Major League Soccer history. And you could say he didn't win the Golden Boot, and he didn't. And if he had a better team, he probably would have. Yeah. Um, but just the way that he was able to go out there when everybody on that field knew that he was going to score, and they were going to try to stop score. him, and he'd still score. And you're like, oh, okay. It, it was, we used to play a game in the press box. I'm like, so could Zlatan score four goals in a game? And everybody's like, yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> could Zlatan score five goals in a game? Probably, yeah. Could Zlatan score six goals in a game? Can you tell me there's a number where you would stop? Like when you eventually you just start to get ridiculous numbers where like seven, eight, nine. That's a but good it, point. But you can't stop at five and be like, well, Zlatan could never score five goals. He absolutely could score five yeah. goals in a game. Uh, six goals. Yep, that's possible. Seven. Mm, okay, it's, you probably run out of time more than anything else, right? That yeah. just, to, just to do that. But in a certain situation, but that's the kind of player uh, he was. Alexi Lawless used to tell me, that um, whenever you talk to him about, I think the 2002 or, or I think it was the 2002 team uh, with Carlos Ruiz on it. He said, fish, Carlos Ruiz is nickname because, you know, whenever fish was on the team before we even got on the field, we knew he was going to score a goal. So we already knew we were up one, nothing. He goes, that's yeah. a cool thing to be able to walk out on the field. No, you're already winning one, nothing before the game has even started. Right. And I, I think a lot of that with the galaxy had any semblance of a defense or a defensive mindset. Um, if that, Man. any of that stuff happened, you would have walked on the field knowing that you were already winning one, nothing was lost on. So having said that he was great. He was amazing. He was great for MLS. Um, I think it was fine that the galaxy separated the time separate when they did. And um, you know, it's a memory that, that I think, Gal I mean, <laughs> the single biggest regular season game, in galaxy history and original. And I think in, in MLS history is Zlatan Ibrahimovic scoring those two goals coming off the bench uh, against LAFC in the first El Trafico. Yeah. I mean, I was there in the stadium. I've never heard the stadium sound like that. I would, people will disagree with me. I think it was rowdier and crazier than any MLS cup has ever been. It was just really? an absolute ridiculous day. The, the whole, there was energy in the stadium before it even started. Uh, you had the LAFC fans who were all hyped up. You had the LA Galaxy fans who were hyped up. They were yelling at people in the stands. Zlatan had just like landed um, after we had tracked him on the podcast on like Flight Finder all the way. Oh, from, wow, really? Oh, yeah, we got him. Uh, we got the whole thing. As a matter of fact, I think we got, um, I'm trying to think. That wasn't the one. We got Chicharito. Whenever Chicharito's plane landed, we had yeah. somebody actually at LAX who I know uh, got video of Oh no shit! Landed, and so we got that and put it out. Oh, that's um, that's awesome. That's that's when my aviation connections come in too. Um, so we got that, but Zlatan landed like he was at the 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 airport, and people were like meeting him and stuff like that. It was crazy. And then like two days later, the dude player, the day later, he played in that game, yeah, and it's just game. ridiculous thing. One of the craziest sporting moments I've ever been a part of. The sound, the press box made a sound. I mean, the press box never makes a sound. The press <laughs> box went, "Holy shit! What did we just see?" You know, I saw that game because that was what the that was AJ's first season in Houston. Was it? No, uh, no, I think second, it was second. Yeah, season. second because it was 2018. Yes. So 2017 was whenever AJ got moved. So I'm watching it in Houston and they go down, you know, three zero. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, ha, that's what you get for trading my boy. I was still yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's fine. Sour There's, about it. There are plenty of Galaxy fans who are still on on your side on that one, and and I would agree. I still think that the Galaxy man. Is I'm like, still good. Yeah. And then you know the Gal, you know Galaxy come back with one, you know three one, and then okay. Mm-hmm. Then, then at the end of the at the end of the game, I went, "What the hell did I just see?" Like that was, that was insane. I have I have text messages. I had text messages from people who never watched soccer who were going, "What the hell did I just watch?" Right, the whole deal. And I'm like, "Hmm." Yep. I had some of my friends text texting me who don't watch soccer. They're nope. like, "Hey, uh, do you know this game's going on?" And I went, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, of I'm well course. aware. Thank you." Yes, yes, the <laughs> biggest game in Major League Soccer at the time, the Miracle. I think March 31st. Uh, 2018 was the was the exact it's a miracle on March 31st, Hollywood ending, everything that you imagine, every script. It, and it was funny because it, it's sort of a cliche, but if like you wrote that in a script, people would be like, "Nah, that does, that won't happen. Like right? that's not that's not something that happens." Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happened. Can I play a little game with you? You you can. I'm not good at games, so. Go well, ahead. hopefully, hopefully you are. I think I think you'll be great at this. If one. it if it's galaxy related, I would like you to understand my knowledge of the galaxy is like a goldfish. I remember the day before <laughs> and the day after, and that's about it. But go ahead, please. Well, please, what please. I was going to ask you is, do you think Zlatan would have fared better with a different team in Major League Soccer? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes, you have to say that. I don't know. You go back and I, I flip flop on this and I think about this a lot. Uh, if you go back to 2018, the Galaxy had Ola Kamara on the team as well. Yes. Um, they had some good players in 2018. 2019. Which, did, they, did they get rid of Ola in he, the middle? He, of that he wanted out after that season. And so just before the 2019 season, they, oh, okay. they traded him, I think, to China. There was a transfer out to China and he went to play for them. And the Galaxy got a whole bunch of money, which allowed them to bring in like Joe Corona and some other players. And oh, okay, okay. overall, it was a good sort of move at the time. You're sort of like, I get it. You know, he doesn't really fit the system, blah, 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 the whole deal. But I mean, that ultimately hurt them because Ola Kamara was a very good player and they got rid yeah. of him. And, and what they got back wasn't exactly good. So, um, yeah, I think if there was any sort of team that was sort of put together, I mean, 2017 was a horrible year for the LA Galaxy. They got rid of AJ. They decided to go young, and they didn't They didn't successfully do that um, at all. In fact, I think they wasted a whole bunch of people's careers, uh, which is sad to think that if you're a professional athlete that you get to the point where you're finally a starter on a senior team and that management is so inept that they ruin your career and you ne- probably never play professional soccer again. There's a bunch of people on that team who happened who that happened to in 2017. Uh, and then 2018 comes around and Zlatan comes in and I mean, just, oh, hey, there's some hope here. And the Galaxy should have made the playoffs. That team was better than they sh- than they they played in 2018. And then 2019, they do make the playoffs with Zlatan, but they weren't as good as a team, I think, in 2018. Um, and so, and then 2020 comes around and, you know, they, they fell off a cliff again, but there's lots of reasons for that, that, you know, I've spent hundreds of hours dissecting with on our podcast, but yeah. You know, aside, aside from the, aside from the part that AJ got traded away, which I, I, on my, on my first episode, I shared the feeling I had was I I was, I was upset that they got rid of him because Mm -hmm. I, I was very selfish and I didn't, I didn't want him to leave LA. Right. Absolutely. I didn't want him to leave LA because I didn't want him to leave the team. Right. And I didn't want, I didn't, I didn't want to lose a friend mm-hmm. to go somewhere else. Now, mm-hmm. because of my job being a flight attendant, you know, I told him, Oh, you know, we'll go visit you. And it was one yep. of those things at the time you say, and you really don't think, Oh, it's going to actually happen. Right. Right. But then it was really cool for me and Allie that we were able to follow him to Houston. Yep. And I mean, we were there, we were there almost every other month. Right. And if I wasn't there, Allie would go one month and then I'd go the next month. And it was, you know, like if we, it was usually like work conflict with me and Allie. So we weren't always there together, but we did find time to go. Um, so after that, I was like, in my head, I thought, okay, I can still see my friend. Right. Then I started turning the focus to like, okay, this is a team that I grew up playing with Mm -hmm. that they're the reason why I started watching MLS. I can't, I'm not just going to drop them like that. Right. And then to see them just hemorrhage goals. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, there was times they were up to zero. Yeah. And And then, and then they lose. And I thought like, what, what are they doing? Yeah, far from the 2011 teams that would score like one goal and you'd be like, oh, game's over. Galaxy and, they, won. and they'd hold it. 
and they hold it not a problem and same 2012 was was similar to that um yeah i mean there's lots of reasons for that uh, i certainly think getting rid of people who who knew what it meant to play positions somebody like aj was was a a mistake and i can understand why the la galaxy and the management who were there at the time thought that was a good idea because they thought lots of things were good ideas that yeah. were horrible ideas and so you go and look at that and say well you know people got fired i mean you know that 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 2017 team was blamed on Kurt Anolfo, um, which by the way, one of the greatest coaches in the history of us soccer thinks so much of that. He hired him again at new England. So Kurt Anolfo is it joined Bruce arena there again. Uh, so that way they could work together. Um, and then, you know, you watch 2018 and 2019. Um, it was, it was just a series of, of follies and mistakes and, and no real, um, and I think they're, they, I almost feel like they're using it as a crutch, but they, you know, they talk about team culture. Well, they lost culture. They lost culture with who they lost. They lost people like AJ De La Garza who knew what it meant to be an LA Galaxy player and to be a championship winning player with the LA Galaxy. They knew how, yeah. what it meant to win. Um, you know, you start going back on some of these teams, try to find somebody who's won an MLS Cup on the LA Galaxy. Um, there aren't that many people who have done it. And you need that understanding of, of what it takes to win. I always say, uh, winning an MLS Cup is really, really hard. And it's only gotten harder in MLS as, as the teams have expanded. Um, and I sometimes think the players don't get that because players are, they're not stupid, but they're, they're, they like to be ignorant to the fact that it's a lot of hard work, right? Because they're playing a game. They're going to work really hard regardless. They're always going to try to win games. Like they don't like losing. That's that's yeah. a professional athlete. Makes sense. But I think they're, they're almost like, well, you, you know, you can make it. I think there's so much luck that is involved. Um, and so much understanding and, and you have to have a good locker room. You talk about Zlatan, like the locker room wasn't good, but the locker room is either bad because the locker room is bad or the locker room is bad because you're losing, uh, lose a lot and see if the, your locker room stays well. It won't. Yeah. Um, and as a reporter, I can tell you that whenever teams are losing and hemorrhaging goals and doing that stuff, people are more likely to reach out and talk to you. Um, off the record and give you insight than it is on a much happier team that's on its way to MLS Cup where everybody's like, no, nah, dude, we're good. Everything's fine. There's yeah. no story here. You know, there's <laughs> lots of stories in a locker room when you're you're getting your butt kicked in Zlatan's, you know, reaming people on a regular basis. So um, so that's sort of, you know, that that's the, the, the difference. I can understand that. I mean, uh, I'll say this, and, and certainly I understand the ups and the downs. Whenever you look at 2009, how much of a, that team was – a surprise entrance at, at at MLS Cup. It was sort of like, oh my God, you know, the, they're back at MLS Cup. How did that happen? Look at the year, yeah. and it was it was especially sort of, like you said the year before that. Yeah, it was horrible. Two thousand seven, two thousand eight are, are horrible years for Galaxy fans. Most much like twenty seventeen and twenty twenty are whole horrible years for Galaxy fans. Um, but when you look at that, the disappointment in two thousand nine, and then whenever you're that good in the regular season in twenty ten, and you get knocked out of the playoffs, um, that disappointment just made twenty eleven that much better and it made 2012 worth it and winning an mls cu cup is hard winning a back-to-back -back back mls back, cup yeah. is almost impossible and so people talking about a three-peat and stuff like that like man you're like winning the lottery you have to have just a team that knows what it means to work as hard as they need to in order to get to to those different places and there's just that that institutional knowledge is not there right now yeah you know i'm happy to see that juninho and marcelo are back Right. With the galaxy in 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 a co in a coaching capacity, because uh, they were they were also two of my favorite players. I played midfield. You'd watch them, and I thought, man, these guys can do whatever they want. Yeah, I mean I, that's probably the last time the LA Galaxy had a cohesive midfield because you get into the Steven Gerrard years, and that sort of fell off. Um, and then um, then there really hasn't been much of a good midfield there yeah. right now. Um, they're great. I, you look at who the LA Galaxy have brought back, and uh, you hope it works out because you got Janino, you got Marcelo Sarvas, uh, Kevin Hartman's the goalkeeper coach now. You have yeah, Greg Vanny, who was who was like a, a ridiculously underrated defender for the LA Galaxy uh, in his time. Uh, you have Dan Kalichman, the first captain for the LA Galaxy ever. So they have this link. It's it's weird how this kit lines up, right? Because we talked about the kit that's a throwback to the 1997. Um, that's like an 18 month process to get that kit done. Okay. So that means it was done before Greg Vanny came back. It yeah. was done before Dan Kalichman came back. It was done before Kevin Hartman, you know, decided to, to leave his position in the front office of the galaxy and move down to be the goalkeeping coach. So you look at those and you say, you know, is this everything aligning 
for them because there is that nod to the past, but you have Vanny who was determined to be like, yes, that's the past. You have to understand that that's what happened. But if you're going to rely on that, um, then you, you need to get off my field. Basically. He talked about playing, uh, practicing at the Rose bowl. We had him on, um, a couple days after he signed uh, with the LA galaxy and they made the announcement, we had him on the, oh, on the okay. podcast and he was in his hotel room, um, uh, because he hadn't found a place yet. So he's at his hotel room. He's chilling yeah. on a zoom session with uh, me and my co-host Eric. And we're talking to him and he's like, man, he goes, you know, in 1996, whenever we were practicing for the LA galaxy, we used to have to, it would be outside the Rose bowl on the grass, outside the Rose bowl, like on a field. Oh, really? the, yeah. And he goes, and we had to, before practice started, we'd have to walk through the grass there and make sure we got any of the glass out of the grass that was in the way. So he, like, we had to walk through and find stuff that was on the field and like throw it out of the because way. People would tailgate outside. Yeah. People would tailgate like and stuff, but like, it, that's the practice field they had in 1996 was that they would have to clear it of glass before they yeah. played. And I'm like, and in my mind, and, and I, you know, I think we said this after he, he went off the podcast and we talked a little bit on the show, but I'm like, if he doesn't take them back to the Rose bowl to practice outside, side of that stadium and some way he could tell them the story like i don't know it, maybe i watch too many movies but that's like the That'd movie shot cool. that you want to see right he yeah. should have them go back there and be like all right now pick up glass let's get this let's get this going let's get this out of here and then let's have yeah. a practice back you to know? basics yeah. wow man that's crazy so, you know it's almost it's got like rudy vibes to it all of a sudden rudy rudy did you ever watch that movie <laughs> oh you yeah watch that movie right oh, you yeah. cry yeah you cry yeah. whenever it's, they it's, comes out cries every time okay. yeah it's a, it's a great movie you yeah. know with everything aligning with the galaxy, mm -hmm. I do want them to have success. Mm -hmm. but, that being said, uh huh, there's a big but. I can feel that. Yes. Huge but. I would love for AJ to win at least two more uh -huh. championships. Right. And then you know whatever happens after that happens. Whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, I think. And it's... and because my this is my my opinion. Mm -hmm. Bruce was so close to MLS Cup last year. Mm -hmm. He was it close. Kind of gives me 2009 vibes, 2010. It's going to be interesting. I think Columbus is a very, very good team, and they got better in the offseason. Um, but it takes a lot of motivation for a team to repeat as MLS Cup. And plus, this is going to be a full season. We're going to have 34 games, or at least that's yeah. the idea. There's going to be 34 games. The 23 slash 22 games that got played last year um, was not an accurate representation, I think, of, of really what teams were the best teams. So I think you're going to see different teams rise to the top. We'll see. I'm never going to count Bruce Arena out. And I, I, I warped and preached under the school of Bruce Arena. I mean, that... <laughs> He may have not known my name because he used to call me John Guzman, which is just, <laughs> which is great. Which I just, yeah, I, sure, whatever. Yeah, I'm like, you got it. And by the way, uh, that story happens whenever it was an, I think it was before MLS Cup 2014. And I think that was the one. And uh, it was the media event before that. So the night before MLS Cup, there's a, usually a media mixer where all the media members go to drink a whole bunch. And so it was down in Manhattan Beach. And we went down there and they had like the whole bar was just media members and stuff like that. Nice. And towards the, and so I'm standing at a table getting fairly tipsy with a <laughs> bunch of the, the media, the media guys who, who I had driven down there. And I think my wife was with me. So we, I had her be our DD. Yeah. Um, and so we came down there. So I'm, I'm drinking, having a good time. And I'm, I told her to come back and pick me up in a little while. And she's like, okay, no problems. And so I see Bruce Arena sitting over in the corner all of a sudden he's sitting there, has a nice big glass of red wine, right. As Bruce would, Bruce would only drink a nice, like heavy, uh, maybe Merlot or something like okay. that. You know, that's, I, I imagine it's just a big goblet. He's got it cupped in his hand. <laughs> He's sitting over in the corner and I'm like, Hey guys, he was just on my podcast like three weeks ago. So I'm going to go say hi to him. Like, hold down. I'm, I am tipsy. I'm not drunk, but I'm tipsy. <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to him enough to where I didn't have, I wasn't nervous about it. I was like, okay. Oh, okay. He was just on my podcast. Of course, he's going to remember me the whole deal. So I go over there. I go, Hey, Bruce, Josh Gessman, Corner of the Galaxy, just wanted to say, you know, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Everybody really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, I've, yeah, I've been covering you for a while. I really appreciate it, all the time that you took, the whole deal. So I gave him like my, my whole little soft shoe that thing yeah. like that. And Bruce looks at me, and I think Bruce was a little tipsy. I'm going to say that, and it'll make me feel better. It was a little tipsy. He probably couldn't hear that well. And so he goes, John Guzman, it's a pleasure. I really appreciate it. I go, thanks, Bruce. Turn around and walk over to the guys. And one of the guys goes, goes, did he call you John Guzman? I go, you will shut the fuck up. I go, I don't want to hear any of that. 
<laughs> and oh, so that's for the re- great. for the, I think for the rest of that that MLS Cup in 2014, um, which the LA Galaxy ended up winning, um, I got called John Guzman by <laughs> most of the media members. So it was a good time, and oh, that's, that's still awesome. sort of my nickname. That's one of my nicknames that I have. I have, I have a Bruce Arena story that oh. I want to tell you off air. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, most of the good Bruce Arena stories are off the air. So the uh, well, one time. Oh well, here's here's another one. I was with when AJ came into town when he got hurt at the um, with his first when he was in Houston for his first season, he tore his ACL and he came back to LA to get uh, surgery. So he came out, he saved me. So I'm driving him around and we're going, we're going down the street in Manhattan beach and he sees Bruce and he goes, Oh, Hey coach, what's up? And then I, I was, I felt really cool because I'm with AJ. Right. And he goes, oh, hey. And then I go, oh, hey, coach, what's up? He goes, oh, hey. He looked as if he knew me. He made right. it seem like he knew me. He didn't right. know who the fuck I was. No, 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 no truth. But it was just nice. And then I told Ali, I said, you'll, you'll never know who I met the other day. Because she was at work. She, she was gone flying. So she gets back. And I go, you'll never guess who I met. And she's like, who I Bruce. I met Bruce. And she goes, oh, how was he? I was like, oh, my God, he was so nice. He was so cool. And she's like, did he know who you were? I go, fuck no. I go, but he made me feel like he knew who I was. Yes. That was amazing. Yes. She's like, yes. oh, okay. Bruce, is, Bruce is, was one of a kind, always was. And uh, from a covers perspective, another guy who was fun. Hey, Bruce, so uh, what's wrong? What about this formation? Famous formations. You guys get too caught up in numbers all the time. He goes, you know what? Formations are a starting point. And then the whistle blows and everything gets mixed up. So blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah. And except Bruce was very good at tactical stuff. So like he was always just sandbagging you. He didn't want to yeah. explain it to us because he's like, you guys are morons and we don't, I don't want to deal with you. But like he was nice in that way. But he yeah. wasn't nice at all. He's very much East Coast, um, you know, smart acidness or, uh, you know, if, if Bruce gave you crap, then the best thing you could do was give it back to him because yeah. then he would re- he'd give you a little tap kit, a little tip of the cap and be like, oh, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I, I get it. So, you know, Zlatan was kind of that way too. He was, it was, it? was like, yeah, if, you know, he would say something and as long as you were on your game, you were fine. But I mean, he would eviscerate people once he figured out they didn't know, like somebody would come in and if they weren't a regular and they would ask a question, it would be a stupid question. Yeah. Um, And he would just, oh, they were gone. I mean, they were little piles of dust whenever it happened. Well, I, can, so. I can only imagine. Dude, some of the questions we get, like so the uh, as a beat reporter, I know most of the guys, they know me, so I can ask questions, but I also kind of know questions to ask that are good questions. I, I won't say good questions. I, I'm sure people think I ask stupid questions on occasion, <laughs> um, but I, I try to ask questions that are you know relevant to what is going on. And yeah. so I remember Landon Donovan one time, um, we were sitting in a scrum, and this was back in the day when everybody would huddle around locker rooms. David Beckham was probably still there. So we used to go stand around David Beckham's locker, and then he would come out and like talk to us while he was changing and stuff like that. It's, it's weird. It, locker rooms are weird, but <laughs> you know, it's one of those things you put up with. So I remember Landon oh, was sitting. Speaking of, okay, yes. so I have, sorry, I have a yes. Bruce Arena story off air and a uh, Beckham story off air. I want to tell you. Okay. You're going to have to start a new podcast called Off the Air. Off the if Air. You're, if, yeah, if you're going to if you're going to tell all the good stories. So Landon Landon was at the in the center of a scrum and we're all there and there was like some entertainment reporter that was there from some show and we were like okay, so she's there and so we're all asking questions and I think I think Landon I think they had lost the game and so usually no music playing in the locker room. Yeah. It's very quiet. It's very subdued. Everybody talks. So, you know, whenever you ask a question when they went, Landon, so tell me about your goal and what you saw from the well, whole deal. And Landon, be, oh, well, this is what I saw, the whole deal. And when they lose, it's like, so, um, you know, what did you see on your goal that, you know, so there's a different tone. You put yeah, in yeah, yeah, of course. So we're all in our you lost tone, which is, hey, Landon, you know, where do you guys go from here? Yeah. What's, the, what's the next step that you see that, you know, sort of get back on track, the whole deal. And then this entertainment reporter goes, goes, Landon Donovan, you're one of the, how does it feel to be one of the best uh, soccer players in the history of the United States? And we're all like, what is going on? And he goes, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And, and, we're, hey, hey, and then lady. we go right back. Read the room. Read, read the room. Read the room. Yeah, that was one of those that sort of, Ugh. you know, I, I remember whenever I first started like doing, um, going in the locker room that if you were too happy in the locker room afterwards, that you would get yelled at by the players. Like oh, they would man. be like, 
they would be like, they would like, hey, we just lost a fucking game. How about you have some respect? Like you had, there was a tone. And so that tone was set. And you understand, I, it's their workplace. I understand. Yeah. That's not a problem. I would never feel bad. But I also am not in there cracking jokes after a loss or something like that. I, you, again, read the room, understand yeah. what's going on. Now, whenever they win, there's usually like rap music playing that we're like, you guys got to turn that down. Come on. <laughs> we're, we're trying to do interviews here. You yeah. know, and they're dropping the F-bomb behind everything. I'm like, I have a PG <laughs> channel. I don't, I don't swear. I don't want to bleep this out. Yeah. So, and everything else. So. Yeah, that's that, that's sort of so. Yeah, Bruce and all that guys. I mean, you know, I've gotten to meet to, to, to tie it back a little bit, but I've gotten to meet so many amazing people. I mean, you know, I met you, I met you and Allie, um, and I, I've met friends who I consider very good friends who you know have been following the galaxy and doing stuff. I mean, I'm old now. I'm almost forty years old, and I've been doing this since like I was twenty six. Hey, I'm thirty eight. We're not old. <laughs> speak we're for just, yourself sir. we're just nicely aged <laughs> <laughs> speak for, do you see this hair up here it's i i buzzed it a little bit too short and i'm afraid it's never coming back now so you know you still have a full head of hair um yeah, so you know i'm sure you're probably getting laid on a regular basis too so congratulations <laughs> to that on as well you, i have a you. baby i have a baby i have a dog and i have no hair so i, I think i think my time is coming up no you're you're like you're you're like a fine glass of wine <laughs> <laughs> the Bruce Arena is holding it. The John <laughs> Guzman. There we go. Line. Yes. Very good. Hey, man, uh, I won't take up too much of your time anymore. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. And I would love to have you again to continue talking about soccer and anything else. Yeah, I was going to say, whenever you run out of guests again is what it's going to be, <laughs> which is fine. I, I'm, I'm happy to be a place for I love doing podcasts uh, where I don't have to do any prep work, where I'm the guest. It's great. I don't know how people, I don't know why everybody doesn't do a podcast. Be a guest on a podcast. Great, easiest thing you've ever done. No, no, no homework required. You don't have to write show notes. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Uh, uh, I know you were writing show notes and you did a great job and you sent them to me and everything. And I said, I don't need those because I'm the guest. It doesn't matter. I'll talk about whatever. You thank you. Talk thank about. you. So, so I read through them and, and made sure we stayed, you know, in the general sense of things yeah. on there. But uh, no, man. Hey, good luck on the on the podcast. I know uh, if I give you any bit of on air podcasting advice, uh, it would be uh, to keep going because your first ones suck. And they're going to suck for a while. Um, and if you're, hey, maybe you're, maybe you're already better. Maybe you're already past the sucky stage. No, and you're not no, because no. nobody is. I don't care who they are. You have to get past it. So, um, you know, keep sucking is basically what I'm going to say. And eventually you'll suck less. Um, and I think after you get about 800 shows under your belt, you then, might be okay. Then, then, then I'll get better. You might be okay. okay good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the first hundred hours is what they actually say. So just remember that first, you have to do a hundred hours before you're going to get good at this. Okay. Um, and that goes for anybody who, who does this. So uh, keep it up, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that interview with me and Josh Gessman. Uh, I had a lot of fun recording with Josh. And once again, Josh, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. A quick story I want to share is after AJ left uh, the LA Galaxy, well, after he was traded away, when I would walk around the LA area with AJ's Houston Dynamo jersey, people would see the Houston uh, logo, you know, on the front, and people, people would tell me, uh, they go, hey, fuck Houston. And I go, yeah, okay, cool. And then I turn around and they see AJ's name. You know, they'd see Delegars at number 20 and they'd go, oh, hey, man, sorry. Uh, I like AJ too. And I'd go, oh, cool. Yeah. And then same thing would happen when I would go in the stadium, uh, when I'd go watch him, when he came to play LA, uh, when he played the Galaxy, I'd be walking around and I would initially hear, Hey, fuck you, Houston sucks. And I go, yep. And then they'd see the back of my jersey and they go, hey, man, sorry. Uh, I love AJ. And I go, yeah, yeah, me too. That's why I'm wearing his jersey. And then it happened also when I was, uh, when I went to go see him when they played LAFC. So that was just funny that I would get such a angry reaction just from the front of my jersey. But then I would get love. Uh, just the moment they would see the back, which I think is a huge testament to the kind of player and professional uh, AJ Dillagars is. So, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to call him my friend. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. 
And uh, we'll see you next week. A little more original music by me. Let's see if I can do... Ooh, some some uh, some Regtron, Regtron. Bum 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 bum. Da 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 The Jesus Show, not that one. Gung 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 g